Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Derpfer A179-2, also known as the Light Controlled Voltage Source 2. So the A179-2 is exactly what its longer name implies. Um, this is indeed a light controlled CV source or voltage source, whatever you want to call it. So the main attraction here is of course the light sensor that's right here at the top. Uh, but what it also ships with is an external light sensor that you can then patch in there. So it does include that external sensor and a two meter long uh, well, patch cable as well. So essentially this is comparable to the theremin module also by Dupfer. Uh, but instead of then having your, well, the distance between your hand and the antenna, in this case, it's actually the amount of incoming lights that's gonna determine the actual CV output. So this then, well, opens up a lot of doors uh, for what you can do with this, because as this is just regular CV, you can do all kinds of things with it, whether you want to uh, control um, uh, your well, your, your pitch width, or if you want to control your um, well, your filter offset, your cutoff frequency, those kind of things. Um, no, the sky is the limit and the possibilities are endless. So I do want to thank uh, Döpfer and Alex4 for, for making sure that this episode is possible by loaning me this unit. I do have to thank, I have to, do have to send this back unfortunately, but um, then again, I hope you guys are uh, sitting down because uh, we're in for a, uh, a nice ride, I would say. So uh, here we go. So here we go with the Dupfer A179-2 or the A179-2, whatever way you fancy. Um, so for me as a Dutchman, it's always a challenge to pronounce Dupfer, uh, whether it's Dupfer or Dupfer or Dupfer, whatever it is, I'm gonna go with Dupfer. Uh, which is probably like the well the best sounding German I can probably do. Um, so please uh, do criticize my uh, pronunciation and butchering of the German language in the comments below. Um, so let's uh, go into the A179-2 and it's going to be, well, it's, it, it, it's, it's exactly what it says there. It's light controlled CV. And what you're immediately going to see is that you've got your... Uh, light sensor, your primary light sensor is going to be there, and here you can actually connect a, an external one, which is of course included in the package. So the external sensor can be mounted anywhere you might want, and it just uses a normal patch cable, and again this patch cable is included, and you can just use this anywhere you might want to have your light sensor to be to be at, whether it's responding to atmospheric lights, whether it's um, reacting to, well, any sort of uh, <laughs> light show you might want to have. Um, it can do all those all those things. And then you've got your um, your CV offset, and I'm gonna connect this up to, uh, to my scope so we can actually see how that all works. And we've got your CV level, and you've got your gate threshold because you also get a gate out. Uh, so you can indeed get a binary output from the actual CV that you're creating. Um, from an output perspective, you do get a, well, uh, the, the positive out and you get a negative out. So it makes it easier. So you don't have to uh, well, <laughs> sacrifice any of your uh, inverters if you are interested in the negative signal there as well. So I would say let's uh, have a quick look and see how this all works. So we'll uh, grab the CV out and I'm just going to connect that to my first port on the Expert Sleepers ES9. And as you can see, uh, we are now getting approximately, what's it, a minus 1.85 volts. And that's of course where we have the CV offset all the way down and we have the CV level all the way up. So if we get the CV level all the way down, we can just play with it and we kind of make sure that we have everything exactly at zero. 
But we can, of course, then increase this and say, OK, well, how much do we want to play with this? So right now, we're just using this sensor here. Just going to keep my finger in front of it. And you see the, the voltage is going down. Let me just uh, lower the time scale of my, of my uh, scope there. So now you can truly see what I'm doing. If I just move my thumb in front of that sensor, and if I then increase the level, we go all the way up until it starts clipping. We might just want to reduce that. There you go. And now you can truly see what we can do. There you go. Maybe lower the offset a bit. And this is, of course, exactly what you can then start to use. Um, let's also grab the negative one, just so we know exactly what it is that we uh, have there. As said, this is the um, just the negative value of the one that we were looking at just now. And then, of course, you also have your your gate out. So let's connect that to the third input there. As you can see, it's now positive. Yeah, you might want to show it like that. And if I then do it like this, you can indeed increase that threshold. Let's uh, change this time scales just slightly. And we can then start to investigate how we want to use all of these. So one thing you can, of course, immediately do is use this as any other sort of CV, well, input that you have. But because this is then becoming quite, well, performative, um, you might want to uh, include the external sensor. So I'm just going to do it like that. And now we can use this one. So just le let's see at what we have there. Yep. It works, it's beautiful. Does exactly what it should, should be doing. So let's then grab, well, what kind of a patch are we gonna do? So first things first, let's um, just grab a simple melody from Hermit. So I'm just gonna grab the clock, make sure that we patch that into the owner and I'm not going to do anything with um, with triggers or gates yet but I'm just gonna make sure that we have this so I'm just gonna patch that through to the well the anomaly by noise reap as my um, my filter for now I'm just gonna grab the that one and I'm gonna go out of my way to patch this I might need to take a longer cable for that don't you worry. There you go. So this is the normal sound that we have. Beautiful, right? So what we're then going to do is we're just going to make sure that we're going to use the CV as the the CV from the one seventy nine as the just going to add some resonance to it. So what I'm doing out of this out of the camera's view is I'm just going to do it like this. And if I did 
disconnect this, of course, then it starts to get really interesting. Just something to play with right so another thing you can of course use is you can use this to actually control the full proctor in so what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the output and I'm just gonna molt that so we can actually see what we're doing here so let's make sure we have that there so we have it again let's see if we get it to work yeah that works beautifully let's maybe zoom in a bit so we can actually see what we have there something like this and the other thing i'm then going to do is i'm just going to disconnect the others for now because i do want everyone to just focus on the on the blue one there so you can actually see what we have okay great um let's then indeed increase that a bit And I'm just going to grab the CV. So this is like playing a theremin in some in some sense. Going to connect the external sensor again because it does make my life that much easier. I can just point this at any sort of light source there is, of course, and I can indeed increase the offset. Now I'm just pointing it at the lights on Pampton and Workout. And point at the camera, of course. So this is this is just noisy, right? But as this is just another piece of smooth CV, what we can then, of course, do? How would we start to quantize this? That's exactly where my uh, trusty ornament and crime comes in. So I'm just going to patch this into that, and then I'm going to grab a just a trigger from Pam's new workout again. And let's see what happens if we do it like that. So first things first, let me just grab this and connect that to one of my buffered molts and then connect that to the ES9 again. Make sure that we can see what we're doing. Yeah, that looks absolutely exactly what I wanted to see 
and let's grab that and then and just connect it to the full prop to VIN on the owner. So I'm now quantizing this to any scale I, I want. So I might want to put it in pentatonic minor. A bit higher. doing something like this right or just pointing them at random light sources kinds of things with this so what I then want to do is I just want to create a something that's already well a nice <laughs> a nice jam so I'm just gonna grab a bass drum here so let's see which one I'm gonna be using that one and let's just jam out right because I think that this is the most important thing that we might want to have when we talk about the uh, dub for a179-2 then might want to make some changes to this patch if we want to grab the the snare drum in as well and as you know I'm a great big fan of Euclidean uh, cycles so that I'm not gonna go all out here I'm just gonna make sure we get some nice melodies going going to add a quick VCA to the mix there too so we do have that one triggering I'm just going to create something here real quickly just so we can all enjoy the beauty of the uh, <laughs> 179 I'm just going to grab this Use that to trigger the attacks here. See if we can do something with that. There you go. I 
And again, all of this is all about having fun and having some performative things to do. And as most of you know, I'm not the biggest artist there is. I might want to just add some of the sub oscillator to this as well. So I think that this is uh, enough to show what the uh, A179-2 was capable of. As I said, this is one of those modules that does exactly what uh, what it says it does. I love its simplicity. I love how easy it is to include this in something that's, well, something I've never tried before, trying to be very physically expressive in my modular rig and I and I like that and it's of course also something that I need to focus a bit more on um, because I've I've got some other expressive modules uh, lined up as well so um, hope you guys like this and um, let's head back to the studio and let's see uh, how we can tie this all up thanks so much cheers so I hope you enjoyed this video on the Derpfer A179-2, the light controlled voltage source 2, um, which is probably like the longest name I've ever done a review on, I would say. Um, as said, I truly enjoyed this, uh, this module. It did uh, push me out of my comfort zone and made sure that I was uh, trying out more expressive yeah, music making and synthesis uh, capabilities like actually using my hands and using lights as well instead of just well depending on well, pre-programmed sequences and then just making sure that everything was set or using random control voltages no this time i was in full control of that and that's of course quite interesting to see how that then pans out how you can then use that going forward so uh, i do hope you enjoyed this as well as always please uh, like and subscribe if you do enjoy these videos of mine um, if you 
if you want, uh, feel free to join our Discord server. I do have a nice discount code there for uh, for Perfect Circuit that's valid all year round. So uh, there's also something in there for you. And if you truly want to support this channel, uh, easiest is of course to use any of the affiliate links down below or just uh, well become a patron or buy me a coffee, anything you like. Um, but the best thing that you've already done is just uh, watching these videos and I do have to thank you for doing so uh, That being said hope everyone is staying safe staying healthy and I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers ta